Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and I make videos on lifestyle, motherhood, and now twin pregnancy videos. So this week I wanted to make a video on my 15th and 16th week update. I'm currently 17 weeks and a couple days. So I wanted to just hop on here and um, go through some of my symptoms, what I'm doing, um, and maybe some things that I have started to purchase. So 15, 16 weeks, I am, uh, let's see how big the baby is at that time. So according to my app, which I use the bump, I think it's the cutest app. I don't always look at it, but 16 weeks pregnant, baby is as big as an avocado. So I have two avocados. Um, they are about 4.6 inches and three and a half ounces. Um, let's see. It says, now that you're six weeks pregnant, things are getting pretty exciting. You may have another prenatal visit this week where you'll get to hear baby's heartbeat again. Even more thrilling, you'll be able to feel baby kick, which could happen starting this week. So pay attention to those subtle feelings in your 16th week's pregnant. Another cool fact, baby starting to be able to hear your voice and they'll recognize it at birth. So feel free to chat baby up any chance you get. So that's pretty exciting. And 15, 16 weeks, I felt for the most part, I felt pretty good um, now that I'm in my second trimester. But unfortunately, I am still pretty, I still get days of nausea and not full days like they were in my first trimester. Um, just it usually it's like around 334 where I start to feel a little bit more nauseous. Um, I think it's because it's the longest span where I may not have eaten. Um, so I do try to keep a breakfast bar or some type of cliff bar on hand. So I, once I eat that, I typically feel okay. But sometimes like the other day, nothing felt better. It was it last week and I just got sick in the car and that was a whole interesting mess. But for the most part, I feel okay. So I'm hoping in the next couple weeks, I will feel even like no more nausea whatsoever. I'm still taking my um, sleep aid medicine that was prescribed to me for nausea in the first trimester. I had two prescriptions, so I'm on the second prescription. And I'm hoping that, I'm scared to not stop taking it. Um, so I'm hoping that in the next couple weeks I will feel 100, well, 100% 100 when it comes to like pregnancy, I guess. Because being nauseous is kind of the worst. It's it, For me, it feels debilitating. It, sound, it might sound dramatic, but you do not want to do anything when you're nauseous. And nausea with vomiting is just, it's the pit. So that I still battle with that some days, maybe every three days or something like that. Um, I have here congestion. I started getting congestion at the end of my first trimester and I still have it. Um, from what I read up, it's just all the hormones and um, the only way to really get, you know, it's something that the only way to get, to get rid of it is not being pregnant anymore. So I've done the neti pot, but sometimes the taste of that um, saline gets in my throat and it makes me nauseous. So it's like, what, do you, what would you rather be stuffy or be nauseous? I'd rather be stuffy than nauseous. So I still am pretty nasally, as you can probably hear. Um, it's worse as soon as I lay down to go to bed, of course. Um, through the day, I don't really notice it as much, but once I lay down to go to bed, I pretty much notice it. So that kind of, that sucks, but you know, it comes with the territory. I did get a nosebleed. I got one when I was pregnant with Cinco, so I'm not too shocked. Um, so I got one in the middle of the night, so I wasn't too shocked when I got it. Of course, pelvic pressure, I think with two babies, although they're still pretty small, they I can feel them kind of like when I run or try to jog or whatever, I can still, I can feel something like pushing down on my pelvis. Um, it doesn't hurt, it's just uncomfortable. Um, so like I said, I am, I have started working out again. It's hard for me. I usually work out at night when I get off work at eight, but being pregnant, it's really hard. Like I'll, I, in the morning I'm like, yes, I really want to work out. 
then about four I'm nauseous then five and then six I am exhausted so it's really hard for me to find the time to work out but the days that I do work from home I'm able to get a 45 minute to an hour quick workout in um, and I feel pretty good in the middle of the day and I I feel comfortable still running for the most part um, I tried now to run if I run one day and then I work out the next day I'll bike instead of run because um, I'm still doing the Orange Theory classes, just modified, of course. Um, the trainers are really good with um, changing up some of the workouts that I can't do, like laying on my back, doing sit-ups, things like that, that I'm just not comfortable with. Um, they're able to modify and I can do something else, so to make it very safe. But I still try to get a little run in. It's hardly a run, it's more of a trot, but um, it's still moving. I am. I feel a lot more heavier now than I did ever really with Cinco until the end. So I'm really interested to see how this belly grows and how I grow because I'm not used to feeling very heavy when I run. And obviously it's because I have much more weight in the front, but um, working out has been, it's been interesting, but I've tried to keep my body moving. Um, they all, they, they say that's the best, best way um, to get more energy when you're pregnant and things like that. So I try to keep that up. Um, movement. So this is funny. There was a week where I felt like I, a week where I felt that there was a lot of movement happening where I felt like small kicks and rolls and things like that. Um, it was very sporadic and I still think it is very sporadic. Um, if I'm, I have to see sit and really pay attention for me to really feel it. Um, I do feel like a little, you can, I feel like maybe a little roll or something like that. Definitely not like jabs and definitely can't feel it on the outside, but sometimes I'll feel like a little, like a little, like ding, like I'm here, like a little thud, I guess, but um, it's like a tap, a small tap on the inside. Um, or this morning, I think I felt like a bouncing, like on my lower pelvis bone. So that was interesting. Um, um, let's see what else. I'm still very tired. I'm probably not as tired as it was in the first trimester, but I am still pretty like beat by the end of the day. Was it last night? I was trying to do something on the computer and I didn't even, I got the computer, sat on the couch, didn't even open the computer. I passed out on the couch at like eight o'clock um, and woke up at 5 30 and help single get ready for work or single get ready for school and josh got ready for work and then i went back to sleep and woke up at 7 30 in the morning right before i had to jump online to go to uh, to be at work um so that was i was pretty tired and i was still pretty tired this morning so um i do I'll have a coffee here and there once a day because my headaches as well and this, my headaches have been terrible um, this these last couple weeks. So I try to drink more water, but I feel like I can never get enough water in. Um, I'm just not good at it. I'm trying to be more uh, thoughtful about it. Um, and I do I do sometimes drink a cup of coffee a day. Um, um, but I don't know if that really helps with my headaches. I was such a coffee drinker before pregnancy that I did it more of the routine and the taste than the filling of it. Um, I didn't like coffee in my first trimester. So my second trimester is when I was like, oh, I can drink coffee again. It's not making me sick. So um, headaches have been, headaches have been like, not an issue, but it's definitely a symptom in my second trimester, 15, 16 weeks. I kind of have a small headache now. I try not to take too much medicine, um, but sometimes they're just so unbearable that I have to take a medicine. Otherwise, I'll feel like I'll get nauseous. Um, out of breath. Yes, I am out of breath. And when I'm working out, yeah, I think my heart rate is gets faster, quicker, and I'm more... I'm not really out of breath when I work out, maybe because I'm obviously not pushing myself as hard as I could. But when I... I am doing like a lot of walking around at work and doing um, just on my feet for sometimes I'm on my feet at for an hour at a time when I get back to my office I'm like, 
Like I'm trying to explain myself and talking and I'm like <gasps> trying to catch my breath. So I don't think it's obvious not because of the babies pressing up against my lungs or anything because they're not big enough. I think it's just like maybe the hormones or something like that. I don't know. But I definitely find myself out of breath and I'm like, I'm not that out of shape to be that out of breath, but whatever. It's a symptom of pregnancy. But what's exciting is in the 15th, 16th week, we got to find out the genders. Um, if you haven't already seen, I posted a gender reveal vlog. We could, I couldn't wait because my 20-week ultrasound is in for a couple of weeks. So I wanted to, of course, find out. We didn't do a blood test so um, to find out the gender. So we went to a private place and we found out we're having two girls, which is crazy. So it's exciting. So they're fraternal, fraternal twins, but there is a very slight possibility, I think, like 20% from what I've been researching. I am no doctor. I've, I can be completely wrong, but I think there's a 20% chance they could still be identical because uh, they're two girls. So basically, if the egg split super early on and um, they were able to get their own sex and own placentas, there's a slight possibility that they could be identical. So that's really cool. Um, but we wouldn't know until we confirm it with a DNA test. And I mean, if they come out and they look, you know, I wouldn't say nothing like they'll still be sisters, but if they, you know, don't look really alike, then the chances are probably even smaller. But I thought that was pretty cool. So two crazy girls. So that's really nice. I'll have two little girls and one older, one older boy. So I think that would, I think our family would be complete, but who knows? Who knows what God has in store for us, right? And this week, 15, 16, we, we decided to go to Dallas because uh, I live in Oklahoma and there's not a big baby store. So we wanted to go and look for some options for strollers because I don't know, I've been researching a lot on YouTube and I find a lot of double strollers, but I need... A double stroller and Cinco will only be two when the twins are born so you really I need something that can fit three kids and from all my research and my research on YouTube I had pretty much all my options were like over two thousand dollars and I mean investing in a stroller is important but two thousand dollars for me sounds it sounds crazy for a stroller so when I went to buy my baby, I said, I've been looking at a bunch of things and everyone has these nice, these double strollers and most of them you need adapters for. For one, I don't even want to deal with an adapter. I want to be able to take the car seat and pop it on and I don't, I don't want to deal with anything else. But I can never find something that fits three. And he looked at me, he's like, you really don't have many options. And I was like, I cannot be the only person that is having twins and a, a small child like a small child that needs still needs a stroller um so he said you can get a trip like pretty much a triplet stroller which that's all it's like a minivan of strollers and that before all the things that i needed was about two thousand dollars so um or he's or they said something about the upper baby vista which is a really nice stroller and everyone raves about it but I think if we got the single upper baby when Cinco was born, um, I could justify spending the little bit of extra money to get it, make it a double. But for our situation, we would have to get the upper baby Vista, two car seats. It just, all of it was just very overwhelming. So what I actually decided on was, and they don't ever share this. I had to look at the reviews, like in the Amazon reviews, is the even flow. And I have some footage and I'll insert it probably while I'm talking, um, the even flow pivot expand. So we had the even flow uh, stroller. We should have got the expand knowing that, you know, we'll probably have at least one more kit. So it's a double stroller, but it has a kickstand capability. So um, I could put sync on the kickstand and put the twins, you know, as a double stroller and it does accept two car seats. So all the reviews that I've seen, they've always put one car seat and then the seat in front. I'm like, no, I need to be able to put two car seats. The problem is it's a travel system. So it comes with one car seat and then the stroller. And then you have to buy an additional even flow car seat. Um, it's not the exact same safe max car seat that comes with the travel system, but they do have other car seats that fit within 
fit the stroller. So if that makes sense. So the even flow expand pivot, I think all in all with everything included, it's like $600, six or $700, which is a lot less expensive than $2,000. I just, I couldn't do it. So if this one just breaks down or something like that, then maybe we'll, um, invest in something better but until then i think i'll be fine i don't think i would ever be in a situation where i have all three kids at such a young age for an extended period of time where, where i can't wear wear a baby so we'll see i could be wrong uh i'll keep y'all updated on this journey um but pretty much 15 16 weeks i feel pretty good weight gain i really don't know and I trying not to really think too much into it I I just try to keep going day by day and pray that I'm not getting huge um although people tell me all the time you're so big oh my goodness like I, I don't know what, to, what what do you how how do you respond to that you're so big like no I know I'm big or this is a good one I got yesterday I thought you were due any day now Thank you. I pre I appreciate your feedback. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to say. You I just you know you smile, but I don't know where the etiquette like has gone for pregnant talking to pregnant women. But just just say you're beautiful. That's all you gotta say. That's all you gotta say. Um, let's see cravings. I don't have cravings. Sometimes I really want like a popsicle or ice cream. Um, but I will say if something, if I see something like on TV or someone's talking about something, like today someone was saying Chick-fil-A and then next thing you know it, all I'm thinking about is freaking Chick-fil-A. That's, that's my thing. If I fixate on something, I want it all day. Um, and fruit, I can't get enough of fruit, 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 which is great because it has water. It has a lot, of, it has sugar, but it has um, water. So I eat a lot, a lot of fruit. I buy a lot of fruit. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think what other symptoms I have. I'm 17 weeks in a couple days and then I have my doctor appointment next week. So what's nice is my next update, I will have had a doctor's appointment, so I won't have any updates when it comes to that. But my doctor's appointments have been, my last doctor's appointment, it was really easy. She tried to, they did the Doppler on my tummy. Um, they did the Doppler, they found two heartbeats, but then the, the doctor wanted to go in with her small ultrasound machine just to check the heartbeats, make sure it was two, each baby's heartbeats, because you can't tell on the Doppler sometimes you know, the babies, they don't, they can still move around a lot because they're so small. Um, but that's pretty much the skinny, as, as I like to say. Um, yeah, we're just trying to, we're, it's going by really slow, but really fast at the same time. And I think, I think it's going to be here before we know it, especially 15, 16 weeks, now 17. And I'm only going to go up to 38 weeks if I'm lucky, which I'm praying for but realistically I can go into labor between 30 and 38 weeks so um time we really don't have too much time um so I'm trying to get, at least get the big things out the way get the big things squared away and you know everything will fall into place but it's still every day I think to myself like wow I'm having twins it's one thing being pregnant but in bringing home two babies when you already have a toddler, even if you didn't have a toddler, it's 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 hard to wrap your brain around, and it still feels very unreal. Um, but it's it's like a good crazy, in a way, because um, you know obviously, you know we were meant to have twins, and so you know I just it still boggles my mind that I'm pregnant with twins, but it's it's exciting. So I'm definitely wanna keep ever keep uh keep documenting the journey and seeing where it goes but um now that i'm talking a lot i'm starting to feel nauseous and getting a headache so i'll stop talking um and then i'll go i guess i'll show the baby bump and that's it so be sure to tune in to next week's video it'll be my um 17 18th week uh update so i'm 17 weeks now wait how's this gonna work 18 weeks 
So, um, so I'll keep you guys updated on that and then I'll have my doctor's appointment and that'll be it. So thanks, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, if you guys have any advice on twins or just multiple babies, that would be nice. Any words of encouragement would be nice. Um, but see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, so I forgot to show the bump. I forgot pregnancy brain already. So here's the bump. It looks so big from this angle. It's so weird showing my bare stomach on, like without like being in like a bathing suit or something. But here's the bump. She has, eh, I don't know if I look that much bigger than the last one. I can't tell anymore. But here they are, the girls. Bye.